start the uh, when I start the show. All right. Well, speaking of starting the show, let's uh, open up Audacity and we can start recording. So we've got all that stuff turned down, got the music off, and Audacity is over here. That's right, show notes. I always forget that stuff. Um, so share. Anyone can view, copy link, done. What if you're an irregular regular? Well, I guess that's a good question, Captain Logan. I don't know. I don't know. All right. I think I think we're good. I think we're good. Let's go ahead and record. This episode of Switchcraft is brought to you by patrons like Rock Roberge, support Switchcraft on my other content for as little as a dollar and get exclusive rewards at patreon.com slash run jump stomp. Name patron. Go back and then record the next thing. Episode 105 of Switchcraft is also brought to you by OP. Seats. Head on over to opseats.com and you can buy a fantastic gaming chair for your desk. Uh, this thing is really, really comfortable. If you're watching the video version, you can see one that I'm sitting in right now. It's got excellent lumbar support, very, very comfortable chair. And for $10 off your chair, use the coupon code RUNJUMPSIT at opseats.com. Thank you again, OP Seats, for being a sponsor of Switchcraft. Uh, sponsor and I just realized I left the door open I'm just gonna go say hey to my son and then uh, and then we can record the rest be right back hey dude Yeah. Welcome. That's that's okay. Good thing I needed it before to attack those that might have it. Right. When did you stop it all? Oh, in the morning. Put that weird thing on the door. You're you're the weird thing. You don't tell me. I tell you. All right. Let's fit. There we go. And I did not check iTunes for reviews. I forgot. So let me open up iTunes real quick and see if we've got any new reviews. Where's iTunes? There we go. Hopefully my audio doesn't start going bananas while I find a review. Ah, here we go. Okay, okay. Come on. See all. I can't get it to come up iTunes is so slow. You know, I I think Apple does a great job on a million things. But iTunes is such a just a trash heap. No no new no new reviews, but that's okay. All right. That's all right. Uh-oh. No, don't save iTunes library. Leave me alone. Okay, here we go. 
For those of you that don't know, Switchcraft is recorded three times a week at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern on Tuesday, Thursday, and also on Saturday at whatever time the universe allows. You can tune in at twitch.tv slash run, jump, stomp, uh, and uh, I'll be here talking about stuff. And uh, you'll be able to talk to these awesome people like uh, Aerslia is here, Bravd is here, Vaxer, P- Pudingne, I, I, oh, Puddingne. I always forget how to say that. Uh, let's see. We also have Kimbalina 66, Link 31254, Captain Logan is here. Hey there, Captain. And uh, I see some lurkers here as well. So thank you all for coming in and hanging out with me and uh, just being generally awesome people. Now, usually I do an iTunes review. We don't have an iTunes review right now, but that's okay. I've got an email. Actually, I got a couple emails, but I'm only going to read one today. Uh, The email reads, hey, brother, hey, bro, Uh, love the switch and the podcast. I drive a truck across country and the switch is perfect for me. I noticed you're still doing Nintendo live streams and wondered if you ran into any problems. A good friend of mine is a copyright attorney who is also a YouTube creator and live streamer. Here's the link uh, you might find interesting. Uh, So I did watch the link and uh, I've seen uh, that guy stream uh, or not, I've never watched his live streams, but I've seen his uh, his stuff um, after the fact. Uh, he's a very knowledgeable guy. Uh, so if you want to know what he's talking about, uh, Leonard French, who is a copyright attorney, um, he was kind of brought into the forefront of gaming because he was um, representing Don Thacker, who was suing... Um, Alex Maurer for um for getting in the way of a game that was coming out. Uh, you know, it's it's a very very uh, lots of drama thing going on, and the reason I was interested in that is because I interviewed at some point when I first started podcasting both Alex Maurer and Don Thacker. So I wanted to hear what what was all the what was all the 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 soup about. You know, I wanted to hear what was going on. Uh, anyway, so that's how I heard about Leonard French, uh, and he seems like a really knowledgeable guy. And what he was talking about on this particular YouTube video is that Nintendo has basically said if you are streaming on YouTube using the Nintendo Creators Program, they don't want you to do live streams of Nintendo games. And I, 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 I've talked about this before, so I suggest you go back a few episodes and see if you can find it. The, the long and the short of it is that I'm not going to stop streaming on Twitch until Nintendo says, hey, don't stream this on Twitch. There's a lot of people who do it. Now, what's going on with the Nintendo Creators program uh, and, and is basically if you are st- streaming on YouTube and uh, you're playing a Nintendo game, and that means that you cannot claim... Nintendo that video under the Nintendo creators program and they might actually shut that video down which actually can happen live because of content ID now a lot of people are like they don't like content ID they blame YouTube for it again it's not YouTube's fault this is because I think it was either it was Viacom sued YouTube and the Digital Millennium Copyright Act said that you know part of that was all this fair use stuff. Uh, It's very, very complicated. But if you want more in-depth analysis of it by somebody who actually understands the legal ramifications of stuff, uh, I suggest you check out the video in the show notes. And there was a lot of people talking about that. But anyway, that email came from Matthew in Allentown, Allentown, Pennsylvania, or wherever he happened to be when he was typing it because he is a truck driver. Um, But thank you for emailing me. If you want to email me like Matthew did, that's runjumpstomp at gmail dot com. Uh, there's other ways to get a hold of me. Uh, you can tweet at me at run jump stomp. You can call and leave a voicemail at two six zero run jump. That's two six zero seven eight six fifty eight sixty seven. And you can of course join the Discord. Um, that that's run jump stomp dot com slash Discord. We have a bunch of conversations going on in there all the time. Uh, and as well, if you're a regular, you can call into the live shows through the Discord by uh, just jumping into the calling in channel. Now, if it's not somebody I recognize, I won't drag you into the on the air part. Um, 
But if it's somebody who's a regular who I've who I've talked to a bunch before, uh, I'll pull you into the on the air section and we can talk about whatever's on your mind. All right, let's hit the news. Feed back. Just lurking so I don't make the podcast. Make? Sorry, Pudding. I screwed it up again. I knew it was uh, different. Or I knew it, I knew I had it wrong, I meant. All right. And the fan is a little slow. So I'm going to turn that back up. All right. The big story, you know what, hold up. I just want to see, somebody mentioned me in action points. Imagine how many viewers. <laughs> I guess that's true, Joel. That's, that's true. All right, here we go. Switchcraft episode 89 was the Nintendo update. You mean, Captain Logan, do you mean the episode where I talked about the... Um, The, the YouTube streaming thing? Is that what you mean? All right, here we go. Well, the big story today is there was a Xenoblade 2 Direct. Uh, it was 9 a.m. this morning for me. Uh, I'm not going to go through... Uh, well, I'm not going to go through everything. I suggest you watch it. It's only 16 minutes, and I'm going to do my best to, get to keep it le to my analysis of it to less than 16 minutes. Um, Captain Logan in chat says that, uh, and this is referring back to the feedback section, uh, Switchcraft 89 is where I talk about the YouTube streaming thing. So if you want to go back and check out that episode, please do. All right. Xenoblade 2. Uh, we've got that game coming out December 1st. I'm very, very excited for this game. I like JRPGs. I really, really do. And this one looks especially good. They started out by giving us a, a story summary, which I skipped. I didn't want to know anything about the story, so I skipped that stuff. Uh, and then I just kind of made some bullet points, things that I wanted to talk about while I was watching. So first off, the game now is confirmed to have both Japanese and English uh Inform, uh, information, <laughs> um, Japanese and English voices in the game. So you can, if you don't like the American voice acting or English voice acting, I don't know what nationality, I think that's a mix. Um, you can turn it over to the Japanese one and then just turn on subtitles if you want. Uh, I've done that in games in the past. Most what I what I do hope, and they didn't say this one way or the other, is that I could just, if I want, just shut the voice acting off because a lot of times JRPGs I find the voice acting in those games to be a little irritating. Um, they went on to give you the the difference between drivers and blades. Drivers is the characters, and blades are like living weapons. Uh, and when you're playing the game, you can have three drivers and each driver can have up to three blades and so that means you have nine things to really account for while you're playing uh, each blade kind of has uh, support abilities and the way that they kind of describe these these were like something that would allow you to move over an area that you wouldn't be able to before or to get extra loot uh, from certain monsters uh, it almost made me think of like the the rock smash ability that you can get on Pokemon or the the cut ability that you can get on in Pokemon games that will allow you to cross a, an area that you couldn't get across before by having these support abilities on your blades. Um, the, the, each blade has its own talent tree, which is unlocked during... Um, you have relationships that you have to garner with the different blades. And as you uh, garner these relationships and nurture these relationships, uh, you unlock different uh, points that you can then spend into the talent tree. And it, it looked like I had lots and lots of them. And with every um, driver having three blades, 
And that, that that means three blades that you can have at a time. That doesn't mean that the, you, there's only three blades. It seems like there's lots and lots of blades that you can pick up along the way. And you're going to want different blades for different situations. So that means that this game has some insane customization going on. Uh, you can also take your unused blades, the blades that like maybe you really like uh, the, the fire blade and the ice one. Um, you can take the ones that you're not using very often. You can put them into mercenary groups and send them off to complete quests for you, which is really cool. Uh, Bravd in chat asks, how many games give you the chance to turn off voice though? Not very many. There was one on the 3DS Bravely default. I could shut it off. I thought that was great. Uh, and I'm sure that there's other ones as well. Um, uh, Pudding in chat says, Japanese voiceover makes it look more authentic. I think you mean sound more authentic. Or do you mean the like because the mouth syncs up with the Japanese um, um, voiceover? Yeah, I never thought about that. Um, <laughs> Captain Logan says, seems like they really want you to have a digital girlfriend that's also a sword. Uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the... Uh, I guess the style of the game, but the gameplay is what I'm really looking forward to. Uh, other things that they talked about, they said that time and weather will influence which mo monsters you run into. So if there's a certain monster that you're looking for, you got to pay attention to, oh, well, it's not raining right now. I should come back when it's raining. Maybe there'll be a map that you can open up and you can say where the weather is. And you can be like, oh, it's raining in this one spot. Let's go there so we can hunt down this monster that we had a quest for. That kind of thing. I think that would be cool. Um, the, speaking of the map, they said that you can also, they, they have like a little mini map in the upper corner. You can actually turn that off so that you can see more of the uh, landscape, which is cool. And then you can have a button that you can hit, which will bring up like a Diablo style overlay wet map, which I, I think those are great. And uh, anything to get rid of the clutter of the UI is good. This game has a very, very cluttered UI, but it's also, most of the time, it's really necessary because it is a very complicated game. Uh, they said that if you fight, there are certain monsters in the game that you might fight and they're like named bosses. And after you beat them, they'll leave behind a gravestone. And if you want to fight them again, uh, you can come back. Now, I don't know why you would want to fight them again. Maybe they drop a specific item and you might want to go back and farm that item so that you can use it to upgrade something. I'm not sure. But they said that once you defeat an enemy, you can go back and fight it again. And I think that that's really cool. Um, <laughs> this was really weird. You, As you upgrade your blades, they uh, they had a specific blade which is a robot so like an artificial blade i guess and uh the, in order to upgrade this character you have to play this uh tiger tiger mini game uh and you gain points by playing that game and that allows you to change the look of your bla of that blade as well as the element that that blade uses which is really cool um the, I already kind of said how the game is really, really customizable. I think it's it's pretty crazy how much customization I think is going to be available in this particular game. Just because the number of blades that you get to choose from, and then each blade that you choose from, you have a talent tree to work with, and then each blade that you pick has three abilities. Well, actually, they have four abilities, and you get to pick three of them that you're going to use at any time. So um, that's, you have a, you have, let's see, you got three blades and four bill. You got 12 abilities to choose from, and then you have to narrow that down to the nine that you're going to use. I think it seems really great. The combat in the game seems very, very complex. My only worry for Xenoblade 2 is will they have a good enough tutorial to really teach me how to play the game the right way because the combat I'm not going to go through the combat I've talked about it before it seems really crazy very very difficult looks like it could be exceedingly rewarding um, but you know I'm worried that the, the that they won't have a good enough tutorial and most of the time I'll be like what am I supposed to do now I don't know uh, anyway 
The last thing that they really talked about is that we have DLC that's coming. And this is DLC very much like uh, what's coming or what, what we had with uh, Breath of the Wild. Where right away you can get like some support items that are coming in November okay, or December when the game comes out. Um, but then in January, you're going to get new quests that you can um, that you can uh, go ahead and do. Uh, in the spring, you'll get a new blade. In the summer, you'll get a new challenge battle mode. I don't know what that means. In the fall, you'll get a new, uh, a, a new story. Uh, and you can't buy these things separate. It's like an all or nothing thing, kind of like the season pass, kind of like with Zelda, where when Zelda came out, you could get the you you pay for it ahead of time and you get the three treasure chests uh, somewhere at the beginning of the game. One of them contained a stupid red T-shirt that Link could wear and it was useless. Um, and then later on in summer, we had a bunch of new stuff that we got. And now we're still waiting for the second half of that DLC. I think that it's a good model because I I feel like Nintendo is pretty, how do I want to explain this? They seem to do DLC right. For me, so far, I think that they've done DLC right. I don't ever feel ripped off when I pay for DLC from Nintendo. Mario Kart 8 DLC, not on the Switch, but on the Wii U, was fantastic. I feel like the DLC that came with Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U, as well as the um, the the 3DS, I think that that was really good DLC that was worth the money. I loved the amount of gameplay that I got out of getting the hard mode in Zelda Breath of the Wild, uh, and so I I'm probably going to be picking up this DLC. That being said, I didn't pick up the DLC for Mario Plus Rabbids because it didn't really appear to, uh, appeal to me. Anyway, that's Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 2. I'm very, very excited for that game. I want to play it like on December 1st as soon as it comes out. But with that being the month of Christmas, you know, my wife is like, what can I get you for Christmas? And I'm having trouble coming up with things for her to get me because I keep getting these games. Um, so I may not be able to play that game when it comes out right at Christmas or I'm sorry, on December 1st. I might have to wait until next year or I mean until Christmas in order to play it. And that means I won't be able to stream it until then. And I won't be able to talk about it on the podcast until then. And I'll have to be like covering up my ears and screaming la 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 every time somebody mentions Xenoblade 2. But, you know, that's that's the kind of thing that you have to you got to deal with sometimes. And that's okay. All right, let's move on. Look at that. I kept it to 11 minutes. I can't believe I did that. Whew. Xenoblade. Ask her for socks. She gets me socks all the time because I like weird socks. Energy drinks. The only drink I drink is water. I used to drink soda all the time, like a lot of soda. Uh, but I haven't had any, any, um, any wa anything other than water to drink uh, since, since June, which I'm really happy about. All right, let me click on this. All right, just let me, um, let me read through this. Well, uh, I hope she doesn't TF Wagner cause I don't want either of those games. So I'm just reading through this article real quick. Okay. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Super Mario Odyssey. There's going to be no spoilers in this section. I just want you to know that in the game, you can buy moons. Okay, you can buy them for coins. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's a little confusing. Uh, when you buy a moon, you can, uh, you get an, uh, I hate to call it an achievement, but it's kind of like an achievement for shopping in whatever zone you happen to be in. So if you're in the Cap Kingdom, I don't remember what it's called, Cap Land or something, um, you get shopping in Capland 
as an as as a title. Now, what people may or may not realize is that you can buy pretty much as many moons as you want. And the reason that Nintendo did this is because there's 880 moons in the game. And in order to beat the game, I think you need 120 of them, which is not very many. Um, So you've got a lot of extra stuff to do afterwards. Now, you might run into this issue where you're playing Super Mario Odyssey and you can't figure out how to get this one moon or maybe the platforming skill just isn't something that you have and you want to be able to get the 880 moons or however many it is. Yeah, 880. Um, So what you can do, you can go and farm yellow coins and buy the moons if you want. And I think that this is one more example of how Nintendo allows players to customize the difficulty of the game to their liking. And it goes beyond just picking easy, medium, hard at the beginning of the game when you when you first start playing. It allows you to try for something and if you get to the point where you start getting really frustrated at trying to get a certain moon you can just say all right forget it i'm just gonna go buy another moon so i'll go farm some coins uh in new donk city and then i can come and buy this moon buy a buy a replacement moon for this moon What does this mean? It also means that you can get more than 880 moons because you can get all of the moons in the game and then go buy more moons. I think it goes up to 999 or something like that, which is is crazy. Uh, So anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know about that. If you want to know like the full information on how to do this, check out the link in the show notes. Uh, This is coming from triangular fish 0564 on the uh, Nintendo subreddit. So make sure you check out that link and he goes through or she uh, goes through all of the information there. And it says right on the top, no spoilers. So you don't have to worry about being spoiled of from the game. All right, let's uh, let's move on. We'll call that moons. You guys talking about Monopoly over there. Monopoly. The worst board game ever. Uh, Captain Logan says, I think the 10-minute load time for Monopoly is akin to how long it takes to set up the board game. I can't remember how much everyone gets all the rules. I remember Bravd was here one day, and we were playing... I don't. I don't think you guys can see it. No, it's not on. It's not on screen. But right off camera over there is uh, Mansions of Madness, and we tried to. We we played that game, and it took me an hour to set that game up. And I had to do it by myself because I was like running the game, and they couldn't see the things that were happening. It was so frustrating. Um, board games that take a really long time to set up. I wish they would just download an app. Or or make an app that you can download so you can see how the game plays. Uh, A game that does that is Space Cadets. Sorry, Space Cadets, which is an insane board game. If you've never played it, I highly recommend it. Um, It's I think it's four to six or maybe four to six players, I think. And each person has a different job. And... (laughs) Basically, what happens is you all kind of discuss what's going to happen, and then each player plays a their own little board game by themselves to try and uh, accomplish a goal. And then they come back together afterwards to discuss what do we do next. Uh, and it's really crazy. Uh, Mansions of Madness is a fantastic board game, Prince Prince David. I highly recommend it. And speaking of board games, I wish that some of these games were video games. Like, so I wouldn't have to deal with setting up the board game. We could just sit around, uh, you know, everybody sitting on the couch in the living room. We've got the TV 
and Mansions of Madness is up on the board and or up on the TV and we're playing it that way. I think that that would be a fantastic way to play that game because sometimes when we want to play, we're just like, it's really too much work to get it set up. Anyway, that's that's just me. All right, let's uh, let me grab a drink and then we'll talk about snipper clips. Snipper Clips has a 1.1 release, and the release is now that you can capture video in the game. And normally I would put this in the lightning round, but the reason I'm talking about it in the news is because I think that that this is this is really good for Snipper Clips because this is a game where there's lots of different ways that you can solve the puzzles. And if you've never played Snipper Clips, uh, it's a game where you're basically two pieces of paper. And you and your the other person you're playing with and I wouldn't recommend playing it by yourself and anytime those two pieces of paper overlap if one of them uh, like if you're watching the video um, like my hands are overlapped and if if my right hand that's this one that's waving at you uh, hits the button it clips off the part of my left hand that is covered okay but it's paper so they're like no blood spurt out or anything um, and then you you basically change the shape of the two pieces of paper in order to solve a puzzle. And it's really fun, and I've played it with my son, and I've played it with my wife, and my son and my wife also played it together. And when we talked about it, we found that we had found our, each time that we played, we had found our own ways to solve various puzzles. And that's why I think the capture video for snipper clips is a huge thing because you can show a way to solve uh, a puzzle, but because there's so many other ways to solve the puzzle, just seeing somebody else solve it isn't really a spoiler. And if people are figuring out a way to solve a puzzle and they're like, oh man, that was really cool, capture, and then they can tweet that out and other people see it, that's going to get people thinking about snipper clips again. And I almost think it would have been better for Snipper Clips to wait uh, on putting this update out until right before Snipper Clips gets its physical release, which I think it also has DLC coming. Uh, and I think that that would have been better for them. Unless maybe that's coming soon. I can't remember when that is. Anyway, uh, if you haven't played Snipper Clips, I definitely suggest you go pick it up because it's a fun game but don't pick it up unless you're going to play it with another person because playing it by yourself is frustrating and a little bit boring snip all right real quick i gotta open up my email because i know that somebody emailed me something and i want to let me let me look at Audacity real quick. File, save, project as. Waiting to save. There we go. 105. I want to see how far I am so far. I'm going to try and be a little more um, regulating on how far I go. So align tracks end to end. Okay. All right, I'm not going to I'm not going to talk about this email today. Okay. Oh, you know what? I have to. I have to because I was going to I was going to talk about this anyway. So I have to talk about it today. But I'm going to keep it short. There we go. That's not it. There we go. This is it. So since the last episode, I've been playing Super Mario Odyssey. I've been playing lots of it. That game's fantastic. And I got an email from Jeremy in Portland, Oregon. Uh, they said, hey, Bill, great show. I listen to your show via Bluetooth headset while I'm working in my office or driving to meetings, which I suggest everyone do to, to hand, do two hands-free laws while driving. I had a question about Mario Odyssey. 
It might be a big spoiler if you've not finished the main story, then this would be a big surprise. But I, okay, so I'm not going to read the one part that he says. Okay, so don't worry, I'm not spoiling anything. But then uh, he said that there's a there's something that is missing that they wished was there. Uh, and then they said, I'm curious if you think Nintendo will add more DLC in the future with more levels. Thanks again, Jeremy from Portland, Oregon. Um, I don't know if they will. I mean, I found it's it's just about impossible to predict what Nintendo is going to do. But man, it would be great if they had DLC. Um, maybe six months from now, they say, hey, here's three new kingdoms for you to go to on uh, the Odyssey. And, you know, for 20 bucks, I would do that. I would play that. And it's tough because usually what we end up with is one Mario per system, one Zelda per system, one this per system, one that per system. Uh, and, but with DLC, we could get more of the stuff. And, you know, this isn't just DLC that, oh, how do I want to say this? It doesn't, Nintendo's DLC never feels like shovelware to me. It always feels like that they've done a nice job. And I would love it if we had some Super Mario DLC. I'm curious as to what you guys think. Let me know. We'll call that a beardy uh, gameplay. All right, this is going to go fast. I want to keep this under 30 minutes. I might be able to do it. All right, here's the lightning round. I'm going to go fast. Nintendo, Flash games. You guys remember Flash? Well, somebody's trying to save them. Click on the link in the show notes to check that out. I don't have Flash on my computer, so I'm not going to bother looking. Flash games were never anything that I really liked anyway outside of Funeral Quest. Big props to Funeral Quest. If you've never played it, it was awesome. Check it out. Well, you can't check it out. It's not a, it, You can't play it anymore. But I wish somebody would make Funeral Quest again. Um... Next story, WWE physical release requires a 24 gigabyte download. I'm not going to talk much about this, but what I want to know is what you guys think. Tweet at me, email me. 24 gigabytes seems like a pretty hefty sum for a download on a game where you're already getting a physical release. That's crazy. Um, Let's see, Bandai Namco, this just came out today, is going to announce three Switch exclusives early next year. Not much more to say about that. We don't know what they what those are. Um, what's coming out? Well, Nintendo, uh, November 7th, Sonic Forces is coming out. Um, Farming Simulator is coming out as well. Oh, th- these are today. And then Heroes of Monkey Tavern are coming out. On November 9th, we've got for the 3DS Story of Season Trio of Town New Neighbors Pack. Ugh, I don't know. That's a terrible title. Too long. On the Switch, we've got Rockin' racing off-road dx maria the witch octodad dadly is catch which i've never played but heard is fantastic telomere spell spire koi dx and super putty squad and tf wagner in chat just said that on friday snipper clips upgrade comes out so that goes back to what i was talking about earlier oh my goodness that's all the time that we have for today if there's a story that i missed or a topic that you would like discussed let me know Uh, If you're looking for ways to support the show, you can do so by heading on over to runjumpstomp.com slash support. There you will find a link to the Etsy site, to the Patreon, to my Amazon affiliate link. If you're looking for free ways to help, just share the show with a friend or review us on Apple Podcasts. I really appreciate that, and it definitely helps. Special thanks to Noteblock and Tom Winter for their fantastic music that you heard at the top and bottom of the show. Uh, Big thanks to them. Head out to their YouTube channels and give them a subscribe. They're great. That's it for today. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye-bye. Name. LR. Yeah, I I know Doom's coming on Friday, Doyle's Bane, but I'm going to talk about that on Thursday. All right. So what's going on, guys? We still got time. I can still talk. I just want to have the um, 
what I think I'm going to do. Dang it. I was going to talk about this on the damn show. Um, what I think I'm going to do is I will talk about some topics on the live show, but I won't record it. And so you'll only get those things like I'll have the I'll have the audio podcast to be shorter. Uh and the you know the uncut episodes will actually be completely uncut. So they're like they won't have um like the audio won't have every every story. And that'll allow me to keep the episodes shorter, which I know a lot of people like, especially cuz I do it 3 times a week, you know. Welcome back, Vaxer. I remember back in my day, we had 40-minute shows. Uh, Brav says, if Octodad is coming to the Switch, then this I vow. I will buy it in RJS, and I will play co-op on stream. So let it be written. So let it be done. Brav, that sounds great, man. You come on over, man. Captain Logan, tempted to talk about Mario D DLC, but still thinking about what it could be. I think, I mean, it could be, it could be a lot of different things. Like, uh, I can't, I can't say one, like, there were things in Mario that were missing that we didn't get to see that are staples of Mario games. I don't want to say what it is because I don't know how sensitive people are to spoilers. If that makes sense. You know what I mean? Um, but there are definitely things like level types that we have not seen in Mario that are, that we didn't get in Mario Odyssey. Uh, Link31254 says, I want super hard Mario DLC. Fair enough. I, you know, I, I didn't, I personally didn't run into a lot of the, um, the hatless levels. I don't know if there's like just one per zone or if there's multiples per zone. Um, but I think like a full DLC pack that had like, I don't know, maybe for five bucks, like 10 hatless levels. I think that'd be fantastic, and I'd spend five bucks on that. What do you guys think the a good price is for Super Mario DLC? I guess that's a question, isn't it? We have no... Uh, oh, Luigi, okay. Mario Sunshine DLC would be good. So you want to have back the Flood. Doyle's Bane says, I'd like to play as alternate characters. Give me Luigi with his different jump mechanic a la Super Mario Brothers 2. You know what I would love? I would absolutely love it if when we get um, Mario Maker for the Switch, and if they don't bring Mario Maker to the Switch, then they are stupid. But when we get Mario Maker for the Switch, I would really like um, the ability to make the 8-bit style levels from Super Mario Odyssey. So where when you go into the pipe and like they've got 2D stuff, but then it bends around corners and stuff. I think that was really cool. The the upside down stuff, I think that was great. Um and something else that I would love to have in Super Mario or in um Mario Maker is Super Mario Brothers 2 stuff. Like the ability to make it so that, um, oh gosh, what was I going to say? The ability to make it so that you have those alternate, like that was like a completely alternate reality that was based on this game, Doki Doki Panic, which never came out, um, you know, because Mario could jump on top of enemies, but he didn't kill them that way. He had to pick them up and then throw them at somebody. And I loved that mechanic. I had so much fun in Super Mario Brothers 2. It's it's a very, very good game. And I love that game. 
And I would love to to be able to play more levels based on that style. So those are two things that I would really like to have in Mario Maker. I'm curious what you guys think. Those of you that have played both Zelda um, and uh, Mario Odyssey for the Switch, uh, what I want to know is do you guys think, and gals, which one do you like better? Like which one, if you had to pick game of the year, because I already think, I think I know which one I'm going to pick uh, at the end of the year when, um, when I do my, like my end of the year wrap up thing. Um, I'm curious what you guys think. Which one do you like better? Vaxxer likes Zelda better. Well, but Vaxxer, you haven't played Mario though, have you? Although it does have a, yeah, Z Zelda does have an amazing landscape. Wyvern Ripsnarl says Xenoblade 2. I mean, that's fair enough, but you haven't played it yet. Dozblane says Zelda. Bravd says Zelda. Um, Bravd, I wouldn't say that there's more variety of enemies in Zelda. I think Mario has more variety of... Um... No, I didn't set up that poll because I'm a dummy. All right, let me do that straw poll now. Was it a straw poll? Or... You know what? I'll do a Google, a Google thing. I'll make it right now. Google Forms. Um, so, add collaborators. Anyone with the link can access. No, okay, I can't do that. Okay. All right, so, um, which game do you think is better? Mario Odyssey. Odd, uh, there we go. Wait, why is that saying time? Uh, multiple choice. There we go. Pick only one. Mario Odyssey. can't what the heck add option there we go zelda breath of the wild i know i can't spell it uh, i got a link shorten the url copy there you guys can be the first people to fill out that form Mario OCD. <laughs> That's great, Vaxer. Mario had more enemies, but they all mostly... Yeah, I mean, the, but there was a var greater variety of enemies, I think. Wow. So far, nobody has picked Mario. Everyone has picked Zelda. And I'm not going to say which one, which one I'm going to pick. You know what I should probably do? I should probably save the project. There we go. Vaxxer says Monopoly. I don't think so. Wyvern Ripsnarl is very excited about Skyrim next week. See, with... Oh, I want to play Skyrim again, and I would love to play it on the Switch. But... I've already bought it twice. And with Xenoblade coming right around the corner, I think I think I'm going to pass on Skyrim, which is too bad because I think it's a really good game. Mr. Tomato Head says haven't played Mario Mario yet, not going to until probably Christmas. Uh Vaxer, it is true that they're doing that. Bethesda is running Skyrim like right into the ground. They are riding that one right down into the ground. You know, Captain Logan, I will say, um, I played Zelda 
And then right after I finished Zelda, right after I defeated the boss, I was like, all right, now I'm going to try um, Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, which is another open world game. And the inability to climb over whatever I felt like was infuriating. Absolutely infuriating. And... I don't think questions. Here we go. There we go. Save. Um, by the way, if you guys click on that link again, you should be able to see your um, your responses, which is 100% Zelda right now. Yeah, I mean, in Skyrim, you climb with your feet, but it's terrible because you're like, you're trying to jump up the side of a cliff and it feels like you're you're breaking the game. Um, Vaxxer says the Horizon Zero Dawn streams were funny. It was infuriating to play that game after playing Zelda. Zelda was just so much better, in my opinion. I absolutely loved it and I had so much fun playing that. Going to Horizon Zero Dawn right afterwards was really frustrating. Um, I'm not getting rid of that game. I'm going to play it someday. Uh, and it's going to be someday when it has been long enough that Zelda is not at the forefront of my mind when I'm playing it. Uh, because I've heard fantastic things about Horizon Zero Dawn, and it's just too bad that I happen to play it in the same, like in that same breath as Zelda. But yeah, in Skyrim, you can climb right over the mountains by trying to overcome the geometry by almost, it feels like, cheat jumping, uh, which was not fun. Oh, that's right. Yeah, my, my PS4 kept crashing. I think that was the Switch, though. So for those of you that didn't follow back then, uh, what Vaxxer's talking about is when I was playing my... Um, my PS4, which is downstairs right now because my son wanted it. Uh, when I was playing my PS4, my screen would just inexplicab inexplicably go black when I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, the reason why it had never happened before that is because up until then, I didn't have the Switch. So I had the PS4 and I was playing some PS4 games. And I never ran into an issue. And then after I got the Switch, what was happening, I think, was that the Switch was taking over my my um, HDMI switch that I have. Like the Switch was sending a signal because I know that some people were, run were running into an issue where the Switch would turn on their TVs. Like they'd be sleeping at night and their TV would turn on. And they'd be like, what is going on? And it's because the Switch was turning on their TV using power over HDMI, which is, I, I'm sure, really frustrating. So what I think was happening is I'm sitting there playing on my PS4 and I have a, uh, a uh, HDMI switcher where you push a button and it, and it goes from channel one to channel two to channel three. And I'd be, I'd be playing that and my screen would go black for a second and then it would go back to normal and I was like what is going on I could not figure it out well I think what was happening is that same issue where the where the switch was taking it over just for a second and then if the same issue is turning on people's TVs I think that's what was happening and it would it would happen at inopportune times I'm in the middle of a jump or something like that it feels like Splatoon 2 died like a fly. I don't think so. I think Splatoon 2 is still going pretty well. I don't know what you mean by the circle much, though. I do agree Mr. Tomato Head is right, in my opinion. Splatoon 2 came out too soon. Um, it, just as far as a marketing perspective, like it came out and it completely took all of the limelight away from arms. And then on top of that, after, after it came out, like there was, there's just so much other stuff to play. Um, I feel like it would have been better off had Splatoon 2 waited a year 
uh, maybe not a year, but maybe, well, yeah, a year. Maybe come out with in May. But I understand why Nintendo wanted to do that. They wanted to make sure that, because in Japan, that is a system seller. And it's really important for them to get a lot of game or a lot of systems in the wild. And I'm I'm sure that we've talked about it before, but I think I remember seeing a spike in um a spike in sales of the Switch right about the time when the Splatoon 2 bundles came out. Yeah, Captain Logan's right. There's a new weapon coming. I think it's I think it came out this week already. I don't really care. I always use the and the end zapper. I, I feel like that's the best one. I don't think ARMS needed to wait a year. I think ARMS needed to come out after Splatoon. I think that's what the real issue is. But hey, every time I play ARMS, there's still lots of people to play with. So it's not like it's dead. Captain Logan, we just got the Golden Dynamo Roller, which is locked at level 23. Uh, I get what you're saying, Mr. Tomato Head, but they needed it to come out before Christmas. I think. Because it sells a lot of systems, and then there's that's systems that are out in the wild that people can buy games for. In my opinion. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go uh, do some stuff and... Uh, Take care of some stuff around the house. I got to do dishes and vacuum. There's cat hair everywhere. But I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Let me put on some music. And let me find somebody to host. Stardew also came out, which took the first on sales for September. What else came out? In, I mean, there, there were so many games that came out right before Mario. It was insane. Like, we were getting like 20 games a week, which was insane. I was very, I was very curious, impressed with this year's releases. I think 2018 could be slower and give me a chance to get the games that came out this year. That's the thing, Captain Logan. I think it was mismanaged. I think that Nintendo, I mean, I could be wrong, but if next year is slower, that's going to be a disappointment and that'll be bad PR for Nintendo. However, what I think that they should have done instead is taken some of these games and said, bring these out next year. That's just what I would have done. That's that's how I feel about it. But they can't do that with Splatoon 2. Um, they can't do that with Mario. They can't do that with Zelda. Those, those uh, three games, they absolutely had to come out this year, I think. Uh, that being said... Um, Fire Emblem, uh, what was uh, Warriors or Heroes, whichever one's not the iOS game. I think it's Warriors. Yeah, Fire Emblem Warriors. That should have been a next year game. I could be wrong. Maybe next year's packed. But if next year's not packed, it would have been so much better for Fire Emblem to be a game next year, along with Xenoblade Two, another game for next year. Now I know a lot of people are saying, "Well, hold on, Bill." Um, just because you want to play all these games doesn't mean everybody does. And, you know, I don't want to play the Mario game. I want to play the Fire Emblem game. And, and I get what you're saying. Not every game is for every gamer. And that's true. But it would be better to have fewer games in this first year than have a drought the year after. And I, it's, there's nothing to indicate that there's a drought next year. It's just something that I worry about. Um, Wyvern says, well, the potentially have Smash for Fall 2018, if that became a thing. I don't know. I think that, I think that we're probably not going to see Smash until, if we don't see it, mm, yeah, I think maybe you're right. Fall 2018 or Spring 2019. All right. Let me find somebody to host, because I'm, I keep talking. I just keep on talking. Let's see who's around. Okay, who do we got? Oh, 
Oh, this is gonna be good. Bog Otter is playing Cuphead with his girlfriend Azaria, uh, who I used to be on a raid team with in Guild Wars 2. So I'm going to host them. You should absolutely stick around and watch them, guys. I will see you on Thursday. Um, wait, am I gonna be here tomorrow? I feel like there's a reason I won't be here tomorrow, but I'm not sure. Uh, make sure you follow on Twitter and the Discord and you'll get updates. Because right now I can't think of it in my head. Last thing. Uh, we all know the big three games coming next year. The beginning of the year will be set pace for the rest of the year, the same way we knew Mario would be out at the end of this year sometime. I guess that's true. All right, here we go.